You can now control an actor's performance using AI. So if you have video footage of someone acting, you can project that performance onto AI video from any tool like Runway, Kling, or Minimax. Plus, this method works in a variety of styles, including animation. The best part is, you don't have to be a computer wizard to make it happen. Let me show you how it's done. Now, before we get going, I should note that you can download the assets that we use inside of this tutorial by clicking the link below this video. All right. Let's get to it. So this method goes way beyond just normal lip syncing methods that you probably have seen online. Those methods are cool. You can basically like type in text or upload audio and lips will match, but this one actually allows you to control basically every aspect of the face using reference video. So let me show you what I mean. So I have this video clip here of me basically overacting. I'm not a good actor, guys. Uh, and I want to project this face onto other video clips from AI tools like Runway or Luma or Minimax or any other AI video tool that you may want to use. And the cool thing is you actually can. So I projected that face onto this woman here. You can see it did a pretty decent job. It also works in an animated style. So we can see we have the face on this character here. So let me show you the exact steps that you need to take in order to make this happen. So it all starts with a reference image. You need to create an image in any AI image generator that you want to use. I went to Midjourney and typed in a woman facing a camera with a simple white background, just incredibly simple, but you could do a cinematic aesthetic as well with like a conversation scene. It really is just up to whatever you're going for. Now this method works best whenever your subject doesn't have things blocking their face. So glasses or hair, can kind of mess things up. So just keep that in mind. So I went with this image of this woman here. You can just download it to your machine. Now it's time to animate that image. I'm going to use Runway Gen 3, but you could use Kling or Luma Labs. It's entirely up to you. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go to get started. And we have the image of our woman here. We'll drag and drop it into Runway. For our prompt, I'm going to keep things kind of generic and just say a woman talking to the camera but I do recommend prompting in the specific emotion that you're going for in your scene. If it's a sad scene, you can type in sadness. If it's, you know, excitement or joy, you can type in that. And then it will we'll just kind of help with the overall body language because we are going to be changing the face, but you do want the, uh, the other, you know, appendages to match the feelings that you're trying to emulate. So you can just type in the prompt as you see fit. And we'll make sure this is in 10 seconds. We're in Gen 3 Alpha, and you can just go ahead and generate a few times. So after that generation, we have this video clip of this woman speaking here, and you can see it actually looks pretty natural, but we're not able to control the face. She could just be saying any gibberish because it doesn't match any sort of lip syncing or performance that we're going for. And just to note, it also works with animation. So we have this animated shot here of this character like in Times Square, and uh, we'll be able to face swap over that character to control the performance. So now it's time to record video footage of your performance. Honestly, some of those rigs like they have in Avatar where they have a camera right in front of their face would be the best because you want the character's face to be kind of as static as possible and it can be kind of weird to act with your face completely still. Now I went online and looked at some of those rigs and they're like above $200. So totally understand if you just want to record your face from a normal camera. Now I do recommend for the lighting to be flat. So make sure that you're standing in front of a window or a softbox so that the AI tool has just more tracking points to pull from. So I have this video footage here of me talking and basically standing in front of a window and let's not uh, critique the delivery here. It's, uh, it's pretty terrible but you get the idea. Now, one alternate step that you could do is motion tracking the face to stabilize it. Now, I'm not going to get into that in this video, but if you're a student at Curious Refuge, you'll find those advanced lessons in our AI filmmaking course. And the last thing that we're going to need to do is speed up the reference footage. I have no idea why, but it only works whenever you speed up your reference footage by 25%. So I'm inside of Premiere here and I have our video clip of me, our subject talking. And all I'm going to do is right click. I'm going to go to speed duration and we'll type in 125%. 
So we'll go ahead and click enter, and now we have this video footage of me talking, and you can go ahead and export that as an H.264 file. I'll just go ahead and hit Command M to export, and we'll make sure it's H.264, and you can save it to whatever folder you want. Okay, cool. So now we have this sped up footage of our subject. I stabilized it. That's totally optional. You don't have to do that. Now it's time to hop into the tool that we will be using for the face swapping. Now we're going to be using Live Portrait for our demo. Live Portrait started out by allowing you to animate a face from an image using reference video, but now you can do video to video. Now, one of the problems is Live Portrait uses Comfy UI, which is kind of scary and it can be quite technical. But the good news is you don't actually have to run Comfy UI on your local machine. I'm working off a Mac and I can use Comfy UI with an incredible computer. Here's how to do it. Basically, you can go to websites like runcomfy.com and run Comfy UI on a cloud version of the machine. It only costs a few cents to use it just for a few minutes. And it's really incredible because they take care of setting everything up for you. So I'm on Run Comfy's website and you can see they have all sorts of Comfy UI models that are really interesting. I'm going to go to Live Portrait Vid to Vid and go ahead and click Run Workflow. And I'm going to select the medium model here. You also can select the free one if you want, but honestly, I recommend just paying a few cents. You'll use the tool for half an hour, one hour, one dollar. Honestly, small price to pay to have hyper-controlled footage from AI video tools. So I'm gonna go ahead and click launch and go ahead and click next. Now it'll take a few minutes for this machine to load up. So I guess while you wait, you can go over to curiousrefuge.com, go to our free AI filmmaking course and sign up to get a free intro to AI filmmaking course that's completely available to you. We talk about our favorite tools, techniques and processes that you need to know to create an amazing AI film. We train artists at all of the major studios and we would love to have you inside of our training. Okay, so Comfy UI is loaded and this is terrifying. All these nodes going everywhere. The good news is there's only about three to four buttons that you actually need to know about in order to use this tool. So the first one we're going to look at is this section right here with this guy in this like park. All you have to do is click choose video to upload and now what you're going to do is select the video footage, the AI video plate that you want to composite your face on. So I have this video clip of this woman here and we will go ahead and click open. Now make sure your video clips are in that H.264 format or they may not work correctly. Okay, so we have the video footage loaded up there. Now it's time to load in our face animation and I loved the default face animation here. I was actually curious to project that onto some other footage that I put together earlier. So I have this shot from runway of this woman, basically like just like talking in a cafe. And, uh, and then I ran it through the live portrait with that face and it's just bonkers. <laughs> uh, I wanna see a film. I, I wanna see something that just has somebody with just like a crazy clown possession like that. <laughs> Uh, so now we need to swap out the face here. So go ahead and click choose video to upload and you're going to upload your sped up actor's performance. So there we go. And we will bring it into the frame there. So now our video footage is loaded up. The next thing we need to do is define the number of frames that need to be rendered. So most films are 24 frames per second, so you can do the math. For this one, I'm just gonna go in and do 200 frames or not for any specific reason. We'll just do a few seconds there. And we'll go ahead and zoom out. You can ignore most of these settings. And all you have to do is go to the end here where we have this box. And we'll go ahead and click Q prompt. So the entire render process will take anywhere from 30 seconds to about a minute. It's pretty quick. So here is our end result here. And you can see, yeah, we have the woman. She's talking. The face projection is on her face and it did a pretty good job. Now, there is a little warping on the top and the bottom, and her hair does get a little wonky in some parts, so just keep that in mind whenever you're working on one of these projects. Now, if things are a little too weird with your video, what you can adjust to kind of smooth things out is this section right here. It says driving smooth observation variance. Not entirely sure what that exactly means, 
But long story short, if you change this number to a lower number, like two, what it will do is just smooth things out a little bit more. And so all you have to do then is just go ahead and click Q prompt and it will re-render that footage. Okay, cool. So now we have our video footage of our woman talking here and let's go ahead and right click on it and we will go to save preview. Now the video footage that you get from Live Portrait is going to be somewhat lower in resolution. So you need to up res it using an AI video up -reser. There are some online options like Korea AI, but the tool that I'm going to be using is Topaz Video AI. It's the tool used by professionals. They use this tool for uprising, you know, old archival footage and DVDs and things like that. Uh, and it's just kind of the industry standard at this point. So I'm going to take our video footage, drop it into Topaz Video. We'll select that footage and you can change the output to any size you want. We'll just go ahead and do times four, which would make it basically 4K. And what you wanna do, if you go under the enhancement section, go to the AI model and select Iris. This one is specifically designed for up people's faces, so it does a good job with just kind of stabilizing the face. And you can turn this recover detail down to zero. That will just create more creativity in the up process, which I appreciate. And you can make this H.264 if it's just going straight to the web, or if you're working on an editing project, you're going to want to make sure that's in a format like ProRes, which is more of an intermediate codec designed for working on video editing projects. So when you're ready, go ahead and click export and let's take a look at our result. Okay, cool. So here is our result after using Topaz Video AI and you can see it did a pretty good job. Now, obviously it's not perfect. There's still some uh, artifacting there and you know parts of her hair are kind of messed up, but the truth is this is just scratching the surface. You now have the ability to control an actor's performance. So if you work with some incredible actors, you can take their performance and put it on all sorts of different characters, whether they are live action characters or animated characters. Now, I should note that you can see in this example here, we have this woman and there was kind of hair covering up her face. And I think that Live Portrait has a hard time with connecting with track points. So whenever you're in the editing process, just make sure that you're selecting characters that don't have things that are blocking their face. Okay, thank you so much for watching this video. You can go over to CuriousRefuge.com to download the assets that were used inside of this tutorial. And you can check out our courses. We train artists in over 126 countries on the latest AI trends and techniques. And of course, you can subscribe here on YouTube to get the latest tutorials directly on the platform. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials, be sure to leave a comment below and request what you want to see in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.